Greetings everyone, and welcome back to another installment in the iWish series. A series in which I investigate rather dubious tech products sold on various sites around the web just to see if they're any good, but most of the time they're not. I like to buy this stuff so you don't have to, but once again, folks have donated to see this on the channel. And for good reason, because what I'm going to be taking a look at is something that I didn't think I'd ever be taking a look at on this channel, and that's a calculator. But I'm not going to be taking a look at any old calculator, oh no, that would be too easy. I'm going to be taking a look at a calculator that runs Android. It sounds absolutely bonkers, and that's because it is. Originally, I did see a video on YouTube by someone, I'm not too sure who it was, who bought one of these and played Doom on it. And I thought that was a pretty interesting, nifty thing, but I didn't think too much of it. But on my last live stream where I was trying to find one good item on AliExpress, someone mentioned in the stream to have a look at the calculator that runs Android. And I searched it up and lo and behold, there it was. I believe it was this viewer by the name of Shahab Jalili. Hopefully I said that correctly, but you were the one in chat that said, look up the Android calculator and that I certainly did. So thank you very much for suggesting that. And I will give a massive thank you to all the folks displayed on screen for generously donating during that live stream towards seeing these random wacky products that I've purchased from AliExpress. So thank you very much to everybody. Once again, really do appreciate it. You're all putting this money towards seeing e-waste <laughs> basically, but you you're all getting entertainment out of this at the end of the day, which I guess is the main thing. So I hope to deliver a very interesting review on this because I know next to nothing about this thing. I'm going into this review with an open mind and I have no idea what I'm about to get myself into. So before I start jumping into the listing, which I won't be there for too long, and the current pricing, I'll just let you all know that the usual timestamps are in the description as well as the pinned comment so you can skip to wherever you need to be. It's just going to be probably all over the place and will be completely unhinged and not structured whatsoever. So if you need to use those timestamps completely understandable to skip past certain segments of this video. All right, so the Android calculator is called the DIY Multifunction Calculator Wi-Fi Connection 5.5 inch touchscreen Android 9.0 2 gig RAM 8 gig ROM built in 2700 milliamp hour lithium battery. And currently on AliExpress, it's $97.20 Australian with free shipping. Then with shipping tax on top, it was a total of $103.94. So I've just rounded up to $104 Australian. So I'll display a very quick rough currency conversion chart on screen just to let you know how much this costs in certain parts of the world. But for a hundred Australian dollars, that doesn't seem like that bad of a deal to be fairly honest with a calculator that runs Android, which in itself is very strange. In the listing though, all we get is its essence is a calculator built in Android system with more features that buyers can study on their own. They have put a couple of videos in the listing showing this all working and stuff. I will put a link to this in the description below if you want to have a look at it. It's not going to be an affiliate link or anything like that. If you want to check this out, feel free. And maybe you might want to purchase one for your own fun and curiosity and see what you can do with it. But I'll try and do as much as I can do with this. The Android system has installed an Office app. It can read PDF files. I'm pretty sure Android can just read PDF files by default anyways, but cool. What? Without further ado, let's take a look at this oddball thing and see what this thing can do, because I'm, I'm excited. I'm honestly excited to see what an Android calculator can do, apart from being a calculator, of course, but I love obscure devices that run Android. Here is the package, which looks a bit sus, but it's okay. It doesn't contain anything illegal in it, I don't think. This only took a week as well to be delivered from China to Australia, so that's not too bad at all. Let's open this thing up and take a look at the thing that doesn't have a brand name. Well, it has a brand name, kind of. I think the brand name is GH something or other. Oh, there's the Type-C cable. Just a fairly, oh, hey, look. no, it's got a brand name on it. Kenza, not that you can see that, but it says Kenza. Time to unravel the mysteries of this. Okay, we're gonna be here for a while. Well, at least they packed it well. All right, here it is. What's this? Okay. Oh, well, it's a bit bigger than I thought. That's what she said. It's a, yeah, it's a fairly big unit. Here's my S23 Ultra in comparison to this. So it's not gonna really blend in that well in an office environment. Like, oh no, I've just got a calculator here. Don't you worry about nothing. I'm not doing anything illegal. Meanwhile, you're just on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, just scrolling along. But this is it, the GHL BD calculator Android thing with a single piece of paper that has the instructions on it. Usage method. After receiving the product, first charge for five hours. In the shutdown state, press and hold on and off simultaneously for about five seconds and the product will turn on. When opening, press and hold open and close simultaneously for about five seconds and the product 
will close. Okay, in off screen mode, click any key on the keyboard to wake up the screen. In a bright screen state, click on the numeric keypad to wake up the calculator function. Special warning, this product strictly prohibits setting passwords and updating the system. Otherwise, this product may not be usable. To install the app for this product, you need to connect to your computer and operate it through a third party desktop platform. This product has two system desktops installed, Chinese custom UI and Android OS English UI. When you want to switch to the UI, please click on the homepage icon and select only once. Special statement, the main function of this product is a calculator and its system platform is the Android system. More features await your development. Basically, this is cobbled together from random bits and pieces, I think. Well, in that case, let's take a look around this device. So we have a 5.5 inch display right there. Uh, I'll just take the film off. Ooh, and that's what that's looking like. I wonder if that's going to be 1920 by 1080. Be great if it is though. But yeah, the brand new GHL BD and then all of these here, which might do something, but these are the two on off buttons, which I have to press and hold these to do some crazy stuff with. But we've got a GT button, a Mu button, a CM button, a room button, uh, minus plus that button, it's a stock button, I think. I don't know. I failed maths. I don't know. Percent plus minus zero one two three four five six seven eight nine zero zero decimal C E C plus equals all that sort of good stuff that's on a calculator. It's pretty thin for what it is, to be fairly honest. I mean, you know, it's just a screen and a board in there and a battery. At the top, nothing there. On the side, we just have a Type-C port just sticking straight out. At the bottom, we have where a sticker would be, but there's nothing. The branding, GHLBD, some Chinese text there, which might say uh, this is a calculator and not a cheating device in your exams or something. I don't know. I think that's a speaker there as well, which would be good to test. And it's got what looks like six Torx, six screws holding it together. And then we've also got two rubber feet on there. With no camera on this, we won't be doing a camera test, but I'll do my best to demonstrate the features of the Android calculator. So if I just hold this button, I should have paid attention to their video because it showed how to use these. Maybe it's this one. Maybe it's both of them. Okay, it's none of them. It's dead. I mean, it did tell me to charge it for five hours, but all right, let's just plug it in. That's a telltale sign there that it's just a reused board right there. Yeah, it's completely dead. All right, guess we just have to wait for this to charge up. But I can say that the buttons feel kind of clicky. But I wonder if these buttons will function if I play a game. If I could play San Andreas and use the numeric keys to walk around and stuff. Yeah, this review is going to be a bit silly, but all right. There we go. Uh, it's powered by an all-winner A50, according to what it says just there. All-winner A50, hey? All right. I don't know if I'm in a horror movie or not. Use Hollow Launcher as home. It said just once, didn't it? So we just do just once. Okay, there we go. We've booted up. Okay. Oh dear God, it's laggy. All right, so let me go to this multimedia computer thing. So that's just what it's meant to be used for as a calculator, as a calendar, all that sort of good stuff. Very simplistic there. Oh, and then we're back out of it. And then we can go to Hollow Launcher. And that's what we want to use for majority of it. But I have a feeling this... Oh, that's the launcher settings. Upgrade to plus version of Hollow Launcher. The build quality of this also is fairly cheap. It's kind of feeling a bit hollow inside, but that's okay. What do you do? Oh, that's the WebView Browser Tester. Okay. Also, something's... Can you hear that? It's a whining sound coming from this calculator. All right, so we've got a couple of things to test, but I'll go straight into menu. We've got App China, Calculator, Calendar, Clock, Contacts, Email, File Manager, Gallery, Multimedia, Computer, so I could just switch it there. Music, PDF Reader, PDF Reader, two PDF Readers. Ooh, Search, Settings, Sogu, Keyboard, Sound Recorder, Videos, and Web View Browser Tester. I'll just swipe down. What have we got for notifications? Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Do Not Disturb, Auto Rotate. Oh, actually, Accelerometer. No, it doesn't have one. You can do it, buddy. Airplane mode, cast, screenshot, screen record, and what else can I add to it? Location, hotspot, invert colors, data saver, nightlight, and dump, sys UI heap. So I'm on the main page, I swipe over, and I see these two, and I go, okay, well, I'll just move these to the middle page, so then all of these icons are on one page. And I go click that, and it does this. That's because that's meant to bring down the notification shade. And then edit mode is to edit everything. It's very janky feeling so far, but just agree with it. We've got another thing there, which does that. Not sure what that does, but all right. Actually, we'll go to edit mode and just check to see if there's any wallpapers on this. Oh, 
now it's that way. It's basically a phone right there, and then they've just chucked this on extra. Yeah, it's fine, no worries. But there's no wallpapers on this, apart from the default one. The performance also from this point doesn't feel the best, but let's just keep going along with this. So what have we got here? Network and internet, Wi-Fi. We've only got 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. But the question is, can we use the number keys to type? Oh, that, that's a, that is a no. Do the keys actually do anything? Not at this stage. Well, let me type in my password on a calculator. All right, I'm connected to Wi-Fi, connected devices, just got Bluetooth. Uh, apps and notifications. Let's check the system apps and see what we've got in here. It's a very laggy system. Also, it seems to be running Oreo, not Pi, but all right. Uh, App China Auto Run Calculator. Of course, it's got the calculator on there. Wouldn't make sense if it didn't. And Dragonfire is here as well, which I don't remember what that does. I can't quite remember. But yeah, no Google stuff here. Nothing whatsoever. Oh, there's Pi there, okay. And there's nothing really much in the system apps either. Battery is at 2% and charging. I will put the battery percentage on just so we can keep track of it. Display, we have not too much within here, to be fairly honest. Device theme. Oh, you can set light and dark. Oh, okay. Smart backlight, demo mode, color temperature adjustment. Sounds, all the usual stuff. Storage, we've got 5.17 gig used of eight gigabytes. We don't have a lot of storage on this, unless it's got a micro SD card slot hidden inside of this, maybe. Security and location, screen lock is gonna be just swipe, pattern, pin, password. No face unlock, obviously, and no fingerprint obviously. Accounts, I can add an account, but I won't be able to put Google on here. Yeah, it's just standard email client there. Accessibility, not too much within here, so go back. System, wouldn't it be funny if I could put on navigation gestures? Actually, we've got gestures here. Oh, but they're not navigation gestures, all right. Let's see if we can get an update for this. Oh, it's just for a local install package. Auto run is to auto run stuff, which makes sense. So going into about tablet, we've got quad core A50 507. At least we know what that's running. With Android 9, the build number is Venus 507. There's the Pi Easter egg. Look at it go. That's basically all that's in settings. I'm sorry if you can hear the whining noise coming from this calculator, but I can't do anything about it. It's just, if I unplug it, it stops. So I might need to charge this up completely before continuing on, I think. Should we test calculator? There you go. But I can't, I can't actually use the calculator. <laughs> Come on, man. So to use the calculator properly, you have to boot into the multimedia computer and then you can do two plus two equals four minus one, that's three quick maths. What does GT do? Okay, GT, MU, CM, all these buttons that I don't know what they do. Let's break it. Well, I mean, it works. If you wanted a fancy calculator, here it is. It's a fancy calculator. Oh, I can connect via Wi-Fi here too. They're cool. So I'm led to believe at this point in time that in normal Android mode, none of these keys work whatsoever. But I will play around with this, charge it up to 100%, and we'll go from there and see what we can do with the GHL BD Android calculator thing that keeps hitting my tripod because it doesn't quite fit in frame properly. How do you lock the screen? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you can't lock it. Hello there, it's three weeks later, and the last bit of filming that I did was left on a bit of a positive note. My plans were to release the review on this thing two weeks ago, but I was experiencing some issues with it. It turns out that I accidentally killed it. Now you might ask, how did you accidentally kill this thing, S'mores? Do you remember that whining sound earlier in the video? It turns out that you're not meant to use anything past a five volt, two amp charger with these things. If you do so, you'll possibly damage the unit, and that's kind of what I did. So once I started testing it to get it prepared for the review and stuff, it started to do this. This is what it's doing with basically nothing. And then if I do this to go to my apps and stuff, then it's it's just, it, okay. So then I hold these two buttons, right? And this powers it off like so. Okay. And then I switch it back on again, give it a moment, hold up. Oh no. 
Okay, so the display's dead again. And at that point in time, I had taken the unit apart and I found a hidden micro SD card slot on the motherboard. So I was able to install that to be able to have more storage with this and then install all the stuff for the review. And while the screen was flickering, I had this wonderful idea to factory reset it because I thought that'd do it. Because it only happened when I went into certain things that the screen would start flickering. So I decided to factory reset it. Done that and it factory reset back to all Chinese. The launcher, the hollow launcher was gone. I tried to install a new launcher and it wouldn't work. I eventually got another launcher working on it and it was working for the most part. That flickering issue had gone and eventually it did come back. So what I did was contact the seller and just ask for the APK of Holo Launcher that they used on this so I could install that and get it back to as factory as I could. Oh boy, was it a very, very complicated exchange because of the translation barrier there. They told me to install the APK for calculator through computer terminal tool. There's many computer tools in China such as 91 Assistant, 360 Assistant, and they're not sure that I can use these tools in Australia. I asked, I just need the launcher and I can do everything everything else. If you send me the APK file of the Holo Launcher used on this, then I can work the rest out. The system is closed. If you have no better way, it can only install the original system for it through the manufacturer's tools. So I just told you and that you tried to solve the problem. If it is not solved within a week, please tell me and I'll help you return it. So I asked, do you have a dump of the system files then? The whole firmware used to install on this. There is no way to solve it through APK. The manufacturer's tool is for PCBA mounting systems, not via Type-C and not via APK. There is no way to solve it through APK. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right. So after the 50 odd message exchange between me and the seller, the screen on the calculator had just completely died. I took up their offer to send it back to them and I did. And what I did do was purchase another calculator. So this was a brand new, completely factory unit. Well, it's not quite factory. I have opened it up, put another micro SD card in there and have tested this and it works perfectly. But yes, what happened was I killed it by using a higher voltage charger. And now originally on the listing, what it said at the top of the listing looked a little something like this. The whole, its essence is a calculator, etc. Hello. But after my experience with it, they decided to add this on the listing, which says, warning, this product is prohibited from using high power chargers for charging. It is recommended to use DC 5 volt 2 amp maximum. And when we we're doing the exchange of getting this new one, they redid their instructions by telling me the output parameters of the charger, DC 5 volt 2 amp max, and special warning, this product strictly prohibits setting passwords and updating the system. Otherwise this product may not be usable. And they highlighted that so I'd know. I'm not to basically do anything on this. When I was getting told all the instructions, it reminded me of looking after a gremlin. You know, you can't do this, you can't feed it after midnight and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, well, what am I supposed to do with this? Literally, don't touch it, don't look at it, don't do anything, don't interact with it, and you'll be fine. I honestly felt like they were yelling at me saying, you've bought our super janky product, it is super janky, and it's broken on you. That's not our problem, it's the fact that you bought a super janky product from us. And um, speaking of super janky, uh, here's the reviews. Uh, definitely wasn't me. I gave them five stars for their communication and stuff. I just decided three stars for the item because this thing is just incredibly janky. So yeah, if you do want to purchase this one now, you make sure that you read this carefully. Do not factory set it. Do not put any passwords or anything on it. Do not charge it with anything past five volt two amps or else it'll whine and then possibly die and kill the display. Follow all of this to get this working and you should be fine. See? And it works perfectly now. So with uh, that big update out of the way, I hope that made sense too, because I thought I wouldn't be able to review another one. I thought that was it, send this one back. But then AliExpress gave me the refund for the previous one. And I thought people want to see this, so I'll try again. And yeah, this time I'll follow the seller's instructions of doing absolutely nothing to it, which I've completely ignored. Opening this up, there is a hidden micro SD card slot. So I've put a 16 gig one in there, formatted as internal storage, and I've put all the games, benchmarks, and all that sort of stuff on here. But it is so horrific horrifically slow, it's at the point that it's almost painful to use. And this is because this only has one whole gigabyte of RAM on this, not two gigabyte as advertised. All right, here's the last bit of the update. So after I found that it only had one gig of RAM as opposed to the two gigs of RAM that they advertised, I messaged the seller to let them know and they said that their engineer told them this, which I just agreed with, but they swiftly changed the title of the listing to get rid of the two gig RAM, which I honestly do appreciate that they did this. But it is a bit confusing that they're selling a product, but they don't know the correct specs of it. It really just comes down to this being a really janky, confusing product that they're selling. But at least you all know now that this does have one gig of RAM and you are limited with what you can do with this. And I can't stress enough that you have to really be careful with this because it can and will break very easily. But here it is, part two. So I have all the good stuff installed. I've put GTA on here. I've put Freedom on here. I've put a browser on this. Quick shortcut maker, device info hardware, CPU system info, all the good stuff we can test on this. So I think that's what we really need to do is start testing this out and see what it's capable of doing. When I was doing 
testing on the first unit and I did get GTA to work, none of these buttons were able to be mapped at all. If you start pressing keys on the calculator in this app, they'll start to work. And also you can change stuff. I didn't know the on and off buttons actually did something. I thought those were just painted on for the sake of it, but no, they actually do a uh, function. And as I said, I don't know what these functions do. So we'll just leave them. We'll leave Geekbench, gaming and specs till last. So app China, it's loading. Just, just wait. Oh, there, there we go. Now we use it like this. It looks so much like, hey, look, you've put a smartphone into this little extra bit and it's turned it into a calculator. That's so cool. It is still cool, don't get me wrong, but um, please log in. How does no sound? Oh, look, we can get TikTok on here. We can also get Call of Duty on here. Actually, can we search for YouTube on here? Yeah, it's all in Chinese. Help. I can get YouTube via this app, but I don't know if I can actually install it without an account. That'd be a no, because that no worky, that no worky. Oh, hang on, that may worky. Oh, that's reviews. Let's just completely ignore that and move on. So I've got Bromite next. This is a Chrome alternative and it works quite well, actually. I use it on the Android pen thing. You know how I said it worked fine? Uh, oh, wait. Sometimes I don't question what happens with this. Oh, it opened up the PDF reader. Okay, maybe I've installed the wrong version on here perhaps, but that's okay though, because we can not do that. Ah, it's so jank. In place of Bromite, I'll use this WebView browser tester thing. And we have browser. So let's go to Google. Google. And if I type in and how did that happen? Calculator. How did oh, I screwed that up, didn't I? T gives it bonus. But aha, there it is there. We have a review for this. They found this GHL BD calculator on a platform selling secondhand electronic products. Does that happen to be AliExpress? 10 US dollars. It's not 10 US dollars. It's uh, 96 Australian at the moment. So far, web browsing on this doesn't seem to be bad. I wouldn't expect to be browsing social media on this and having it be super snappy, but for the most part, it works pretty well. All right, let me jump onto YouTube quickly. I know it's in the browser, but it's the only option I have at the moment. Here is Costa Rica in 4K on oh, a calculator. Why can't I scroll down? That's a bit strange. Oh, I can play it in 4K. I'll play it in 1080p. No, not today. How do I get rid of this side window? How about 720p? Do you like 720p? Destroy and create new web view. That's probably because this browser is not meant to do anything past while well, testing, obviously. I think you get the point though. You can browse the web on this. It's just that YouTube might be a little bit difficult. I mean, I also have to think as well, who's actually gonna purchase this and use this as its intended function, just as a calculator and nothing more. If you're purchasing this, it's because you wanna stuff around with this and do certain things with it. So unless you purchase one and wanna chuck YouTube on it, feel free to let me know how you go. Next up is calculator, which I did show that but you can't use these keys in calculator. You have to go back to the multimedia computer to use it. Calendar looks a little something like a standard calendar. Nothing to really see there. Clock looks like a clock. There it is there. Contacts just has your contacts in there. Device for hardware we'll come back to. Email is just the standard email client. File manager, however, is not stock. It's some weirdo, oh, I'm using that to hold the calculator up. That's what she said. It looks a little something like this. I don't know who this is made by. About file manager, Cheetah Mobile. I did find Google Files going through settings. So I was able to use that to install my applications and stuff. Yeah, it's a super weird file manager. I don't know why they just didn't stick with the stock file manager and installed this, but it's here anyways. Freedom will definitely come back to. Gallery, I don't have anything to show you, but let's see if I can play a 4K file on it. The only function that these keys serve within Android is to wait the screen up. That's it. But as I showed earlier, you can't actually lock this device unless that's when the whole teardown comes into play. Because when I tore this down, looking for a micro SD card slot and I found it, I found a bunch of other stuff too. So stick around for the teardown because that's something you definitely do not want to miss. Also, I'm fairly sure the case is 3D printed. I could be wrong, but it just feels very much like that. So I've copied over some 4K files just to see if they play on this. I don't think they will, but I'll give them a shot. So jellyfish in 4K, which I recently demonstrated on the B-Link and Geekcom PCs. We'll just see if it does work though. Can't play this video. All right, let me try the Harbour Bridge one. There's two video player and videos. We'll try that. Does that work? Oh, there we go. Well, that's 4K. I mean, the display doesn't look too bad at all. It's quite reasonable. And then I've got Costa Rica in 4K, I believe. And that looks a little something like this. I have to hold this a bit strange or else I'm going to hit the tripod, but that's what that's looking like. 
and the colors are actually fairly decent. Granted, this is not in the best bitrate, but it works for the most part. Not for the most part, it's very, very smooth. So at least multimedia functions can be done on this, basic multimedia functions anyways. Which makes me wonder, would I rather the Android Pen for all weirdo tasks, or this for another $20 more that doesn't have a camera but has a bigger screen and it looks like a calculator? I don't know which one I'd prefer, to be fairly honest. Moving on, Geekbench 5 will come back to. Same with Grand Theft Auto, multimedia computer I've already showcased. Music, BFG Division on a calculator. How do I turn the volume up? Here we go. That's how I can put the volume up all the way. So let's see how BFG Division goes on the calculator. I've got to say, I wasn't expecting too much from the speaker, but it's actually fairly loud for what it is, and it had a bit of punch in it too. That is also because the speaker in this is a lot bigger than most mobile phones I look at on the channel. It's definitely no big spurker, but it comes close to being a big spurker. The two PDF readers, which I should have put the Doom Bible on this. We could have read the Doom Bible together. Here is a point where it's asking for an update, but remember, according to the instructions, I shouldn't update the system. This is classed as system because it's a system application. So um, look at the glitches on the window. Let's just go later and pretend none of that happened. Also, you have not read the document. What they should have done is included the instructions as a PDF on this. Wouldn't that have made, would, yeah, that would have made sense. It's a basic PDF reader um, and same with the next one, but I just don't know why they've put two on here for. Maybe because they were like, the first one probably won't work. So the second one will probably work for you. Or is it the fact that one opens in landscape and one opens in portrait? That's probably it. Yeah, this PDF reader is carry all that you can read. Add removing for VIP. What does it say? We would appreciate your input. Not good enough. Okay, I don't know what I did there. Oh. It wants me to email them. It's a PDF reader. It has file transfer and printing and sharing and an account as well. Sign up now to get 10 credits free. Why would you need that for a PDF reader? You're not here to see PDFs being read on a calculator. I mean, you could be, but we'll continue on. Search is just going to be the usual search function. Settings with been through the Sogu keyboard. So, Sogu keyboard. Let's turn it this way again. Let's click the orange button. Well, that's all we want to do. We want to keep it as English. Sound recorder's up next. I'm curious, does this have a microphone built into it? Hello? Hello. Hello. I don't think there's a microphone built into this. It plays back static. I reckon there's one on the motherboard. Hang on, let me scream into it. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Device. Quality. In insurance. Um, project. Hello. Let us see if there is a microphone. No. That's all it's playing back. I would have just thought that if you have this sort of a device, you'd have a microphone built into it to take notes down. Because if you had this on your desk, you might be like, oh, I just want to quickly record. Hang on. Make sure I have coffee with Steve at 10 a.m. or something like that. And then have that little message and then go back to it and go, oh, yeah, but there's no microphone. So not much we can do there. Unless, of course, there is one hidden on the motherboard. CPU system info will also come back to. And the last thing is videos, which I've already demonstrated. So not really too much we can do here without a camera. That chops out a significant portion of the video. But it would have been cool if they had included a camera on this. Let me open up Geekbench. If this opens, or is it going to crash? I haven't tested. Oh, it does open. All right. All win a quad core A50, 507, Android 9. And that's pretty much it. I'll run the CPU benchmark. Do you see the glitches going on? It's a little bit odd. What time is it at the moment currently? It's 9.15 PM. I think this will take at least an hour or more, but I'm interested in seeing the scores. If it spontaneously combusts, I know why. It's at 2%. It's moving. Meanwhile, I'm going to play Resident Evil real quickly. Oh, I just wasted my time running Geekbench on this. It's now 9.40 p.m. and Geekbench crashed. I have a feeling because there's no default browser on this, which is required for Geekbench 5 to then open up and show the scores. I can't see what the scores were. It didn't show me. So that was a waste of time. I wanted to see what we'd at least get for numbers so I could compare it to other devices, but that's not going to work. So far, a lot of things on this thing aren't working. That's a lot of things. Now that I've tried Geekbench, I want to see the specifications before I go into gaming, just to double check everything. All winner quad core A50 507 with a 720p display, 1280 by 720 display, which isn't too bad for this, but yeah, one gigabyte of RAM and eight gigabytes of storage. And that just crashed too. Maybe I'll take life support out, perhaps. That might help. 
Nope, this is good. Let me try the other application. What the hell happened there? Oh, there we go. Okay, something. The board is Xdroid. Definitely running Android Pi on this. No root access. Quad core processor with a Mali 400 MP GPU. Eight gigabytes of internal storage. One gigabyte of RAM, yeah. Oh, I can't do the multi-touch either because device info hardware just breaks. I'll go back into it actually. Logical density is that by the way, but I'm not sure. There's the battery capacity there. It's always wrong in this app. 45 degrees for the CPU temperature. Uh, it's got a light sensor though. Wonder where the light sensor is and cameras crashes it. Multi-touch, five point, two point. Whoa, five point multi-touch. That's not bad. The brand is uh, Shafu. Shaf, Shafu, Shaf, no, that's, no, that's not how it's pronounced. I feel this thing is gonna break at any moment. I just don't know when it, <laughs> it's, oh, this PDF reader opened up. All right, fair enough. Clear everything in the background to make it snappier again. The one gig of RAM is not really helping it in this case. Before I open up gaming, I'm going to go into Quick Shortcut Maker just to see if there's anything that would be worth opening up in here. Oh, Dragonfire. What does Dragonfire do? Okay, there's a lot of things <laughs> that just crash this. Every Everything just crashes. Nothing opens up. Holo Launcher, which I have dumped the system files. Well, what I could dump from this anyway, so they'll be in the description. Feel free to check them out and see what you can find from them. Multimedia Computer is by Say, say, uh, say, oh, okay. Two PDF readers, one by, I can't read the screen, KDN Mobile, and the other one's by Eleven. In Quick Shortcut Maker, there's pretty much nothing to really open up here. Thought maybe there might be a browser hidden in here, but nope, nothing. Very, very basic. Now that my faith in this thing has kind of gone a bit downhill, let me attempt to do some proper gaming on this. Not going to be using cloud services or anything, going to be playing the games directly from this calculator to test the performance. So, of course, we're going to try Doom first. I feel like using Free Doom as a test for gaming just to go, oh yeah, this welcome device does run Doom. Feel free to let me know down in the comments if you want to see Doom being shown on other devices or not. There's an error there. That's okay. It runs. And none of the keys work. I need on-screen keys to play Doom. I could have connected a keyboard. Ah, oh, it does on-the-go work. Yeah, this totally will work. But I will go to gamepad. Let's just go to a custom button, for example. Yeah, that proves it right there. I can't actually map these keys to be used for gaming. So unfortunately I've got to use a keyboard, which kind of defeats the whole purpose of it, doesn't it? On the go works though. And thus we have Doom. I mean, it runs perfect. Not that I can really see what's going on because I'm looking through the viewfinder <laughs> to be able to see where I'm going. It's very, very dark. Let me just complete this. Oh, sorry, imp. Move out of the way, buddy. Did that just lag then? Did that lag? It could be because I'm using the uh, micro SD card to load it. Could be not really the best performer here, but... I'm at the second level at least. I mean, do you want to purchase a calculator just to run Doom on it? I mean, the option's there. Oops. I will try Doom 2 real quickly. See, if I used the 8 gigabytes of internal storage, I wouldn't have been able to install GTA, so that's why I was able to put the micro SD card in, use that as internal storage, but in doing so, it has rendered this thing extremely slow. But even without that, it's still extremely slow regardless. Did it work? Yep, it worked. There we go. You can't really see too much of what's going on. Yeah, no, you can't see anything. Well, I can grab the chainsaw and uh, try and see where I'm going. Oh, here we go. Now I can see. Perfect. Yeah, well, I mean, it runs Doom. I guess that's uh, the best part, but yeah, it's, it's sort of lagging. I've never seen Doom lag. I mean, I have, but on this, I wouldn't expect it to lag, but uh, it, it is. But for the most part, it's perfectly playable. Once again, it comes back to, uh, do you really want to buy this calculator just to run Doom on it? It would be a cool party trick, but I think playing Doom on a pen is more of a party trick than on a calculator, but feel free to debate me in the comments. Now that we know it plays Doom, can it play San Andreas? I know it can boot it up, 
but can it play it though? Now, unlike the pen, I can actually click down the bottom and go offline. And ta-da, we have San Andreas. Well, not yet. As for the display settings, I'll leave it all on default and then we'll crank it up to high once I get into the game. So here we go, San Andreas on a calculator. What a world we live in. There we go. San Andreas on a calculator. Now I can use it a little something like this. There we go. Watch me roll. Um, this feels extremely janky. The touchscreen's kind of a bit unresponsive at times. I mean, it has been throughout this whole entire review, so... Uh, definitely not going to make this jump now. Nope, because I'm over there somewhere. Oh, hello. Nope, didn't make it. And, yeah, if I press any of the buttons, nothing works. If I was to crank the settings up with one gig of RAM, I'm not expecting miracles. But, hey, prove me wrong. Ah, that's probably the laggiest I've seen San Andreas run in a while. Wow, that's... that's... that's painful. This is very depressing. Uh... I'll put it back down to the defaults. That's better! And you can play San Andreas to your heart's desire. On your calculator. Anyone want to count how many times I've said calculator in this review? Probably a lot. Granted, this was not meant for, you know, gaming and pretty much anything else. Apart from being used as a glorified calculator with Android slapped on it. Why is the touchscreen so iffy? Having Android on this is really cool. I think I just clicked it back down into place. That's okay. Yeah, you can do a couple of things with this. Don't expect this to run uh, absolutely everything. You're very limited in what you can do with this. And if anything were to happen to this, if you factory reset this, you lose that functionality that they've put on to this by default. Don't install APKs. Don't install... Just don't look at it. Don't touch it and you'll be fine. You can use it as a cool calculator. Oops. Yeah, this this is this is painful. For the fun of it, let's just try GTA 3 at all high settings just to see how it runs. I think I put the sound effects down, but someone actually asked me, why do I say Banshee at this point? Because Claude's driving a Banshee. There's the Banshee. It's weird hearing this without sound effects. I know a place in the edge of the red light district where we can lay low, but my hands are messed up. So you're better to be how does it run? Better than San Andreas. Kind of. Granted, this is all on the maximum settings, but... Uh, can I flip it? Oh, so close. Old school GTA? That runs a bit better. Oh god, it's so weird. Oh, did I flip the car? I think you get a good idea of what's going on with this thing. I was gonna try emulators. Almost flipped it. I was going to try emulators, but because I can't actually use the buttons on this to be mapped for game controls, there was kind of no point because I would have loved to have played Pokemon Yellow or something like that using 8, 2, 4, and 6 as directions and then like these two as A and B or something. That would have been really cool, but as far as I know, there is no way to map the controls outside of that multimedia computer app. I think I've tested absolutely everything that I needed to on this thing. With what has worked, it's been pretty lackluster. I did a lot more with the pen than I did with this. The pen was janky but it was janky in a good way. This is literally just thrown together bits and they've called it a day. And knowing that you get a piece of paper telling you not to do this, don't do this, don't do that. It's hard to really recommend this as a product that you should purchase unless you really want something to play around with and stuff around with, then this would probably do the job because you can mess about with this and stuff and make a backup of the system image that's on this in case you stuff it up. You can then go back and restore it if you do make a mistake because yeah, if you factory reset it, it breaks. There's a lot of breaking that goes on with this thing, to be fairly honest. For $100 Australian, you could probably get a secondhand smartphone that has better specs than this and be able to do whatever. This comes down to a pure novelty and nothing much else. Who would want to purchase one of these and use as a calculator when your smartphone has a calculator on it? So you could just use that. And then if you had this on your desk and want to use this as a calculator and your boss walks past and you're like, oh, no, 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 I'm just on my calculator. I'm not, I'm not doing anything with it. It's really a bit iffy to fit this into a specific market. But hey, prove me wrong. People may be buying this to specifically use as a really cool fancy calculator. But apart from that though, it's just another very generic Android device in a fancy shell. But at least I got to test it. If it wasn't for that one viewer who told me about this, it wouldn't have sparked my interest in having a look at it. 
And to power this off, you just pull these two buttons and that's it. It turns off. So now here is the fun part. Well, I thought gaming would be the best part, but I think tearing this down is the next best thing because what you're about to see in this is so incredibly janky. When I took the first unit apart and I seen the insides, I just went, oh boy, wow. That's uh, that's a sight to see. If you have seen other videos on YouTube about this, then you probably have seen the inside. But if you have not, then keep your eyes on the screen right now because you don't want to miss what's about to happen. There are a bunch of clips at the sides to hold it together, but you simply just kind of uh, go to the top. There's also some uh, residue just there from some sort of adhesive, possibly, perhaps. I'm not too sure. And if you just open it up and just kind of push in, there you go. And you're in. Ta-da! Before you fall over, we need to take some things in first. I'm gonna remove the big spurker. So there's the big spurker just there. We have actual power buttons on the motherboard. The volume and reset buttons are gone, but you'd probably still be able to use them to boot into recovery. You also have a micro USB port on here because this is a reused motherboard from likely a tablet. That would be my guess anyways. The 2,700 milliamp hour battery, which when I pulled this apart the first time, I went, I could probably fit this 3,700 milliamp hour battery into this and off I went. So there is modding options. If you wanted to be an absolute mad lad and mod this, you can. I don't know if you'd want to, but you, you can if you want to. Let's take a look at the calculator bit first. Okay. Oh, the whole point of 3M is to take the sticker off and then stick it down. Okay, sure. They didn't want to touch on the screws. So yeah, let's take off the calculator bit. Also, does this look 3D printed? I don't think that's 3D printed. I mean, it could be. I, I don't know. It's not solid, I'll tell you that. There's a flex cable that bridges the two boards together and the type C port is on the calculator portion and the micro USB port is there. You can actually use this micro USB port to transfer stuff to it, it works. And you can charge the battery that way too. I did actually use these buttons when I pulled this apart for the first time. Sure enough, they work. So if you actually wanted to lock this, you could probably make some holes at the back of the plastic for these and push them in if you wanted to. As I said, modding this would probably be a better idea because you could put a better motherboard in this then somehow use this portion and, I don't know, do some mad hacks. Do some mad hacks. Live life by doing mad hacks. I'm going to say this, but I don't think this will survive. I will try and be as careful as I can because I can take the shielding off. I don't have good feelings for this. So taking the calculator portion off reveals... That's not too exciting at all. Uh, it's just a whole bunch of little membrane buttons. If we take one of the keys out, that's what one of the keys looks like. And that just... And that's it. I thought there would have been a little bit more functionality on this, but nope, there it is. All the little buttons there and all the little contacts. There is a little controller. Um, a button fell off. There is a little controller there, which is probably used for USB and input, perhaps. It really just is unfortunate that this couldn't be used for controls because that would have made this a little bit better. But there's people out there that are a lot smarter than me that probably know how to do some particularly cool things to get that working. So if you have an idea, feel free to let me know down in the comments. It's the motherboard that we want to take a look at next. The digitizer cable, Wi-Fi antenna, the LCD cable, and then we can lift this out. And here we go. They actually put a plastic support behind the screen, which is helpful but there's some codes on the screen there if that tells you anything probably not but it looks like a generic display pinched from something let's move that to the side and come back to the motherboard we've got the micro sd card which i found earlier a wi-fi chip just there which is xr829 that's eight gigabyte of flash storage right there according to what it says the board is made by a long oh, ala50 along that makes sense nothing on the bottom except for just some markings come to think of it looking at the motherboard i don't know if this would be for a tablet or not i mean the buttons are there so it could be for something i'm not too sure the shielding is up next taking the hood off <laughs> Here we go. There is the all winner A50 powerful chip just there. Then we have another module just there, probably power most likely. And then we have all of these, which are oh, these are two gigabit modules each, which means 256 meg each. I'll Google them just to make sure that they do correspond with 256 megabytes each. That's pretty much it within this thing. I'll just put the hood back on. I have a question. I don't think I'm going to get an answer to it because no one's listening, but that's okay. I don't think this will work. I think I've literally killed it. I don't believe in this. Oh shit. That just went straight through the fucking board, didn't it? I don't trust this. I mean, no one said I should, but, you know, shut up, Smalls. Okay. I think it's back together. So if you go to the power button... Oh, um, it's already switched on by itself. Oops. Well, at least I know I didn't kill it. That's a good sign. Let me just show you if I press the button at the back. Huh. This one doesn't do it. 
what the hell? This unit actually doesn't have working buttons. The other one I had did. No, not even the other one works. They might have fixed that, so then it stops me from pressing buttons. I think I told them that the buttons do work, so maybe they've patched it or something. They've done something. Okay, the buttons still work, so that's good. Well, I'll just put this back together and pretend I wasn't here. Does that not sound cheap? I'm surprised I didn't break it. How it's functioning still is beyond me. Well, with this all back together, I'll display the full specifications for the GAHL BD calculator thing to the side. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, to take all of those specifications in because it's not too much for the money. Don't get me wrong, it is a cool novelty. I just don't see the proper functionality of this because you can use your smartphone as a calculator, but if you wanted physical buttons, then sure enough, you could go with this. With that being said, that is all I have to demonstrate with this thing. It has been a journey. Now that I know that it still works, I could probably use it for something else, or I might put a bigger battery in this just for the whole sake of it. It's still just a thing that just works. It just works and you don't question why it works because it just works well i need to thank a few folks such as shahab i'm sorry i'm butchering this shahab jalili for suggesting on the stream to look at the calculator thank you very much for suggesting it because i wouldn't have looked it up otherwise but yeah it's definitely not a 10 dollar calculator it's yeah 96 dollars australian maybe it's different for people in other regions i'm not too sure and finally thank you very much to all the folks displayed on screen for donating during that previous live stream i think i can cut it in this video otherwise i'll leave a link to it in the description if you wanted to watch that and listen to all the shenanigans that happened. Yeah, massive thank you to everyone who chipped in and donated. And I feel bad because Brian Martins wasn't there for the stream. And then he'd left a comment and said, I missed out on one stream and I'm left out. And I felt really bad. So thank you, Brian. I should put a thank you in every video now saying thank you, Brian and, and Rafa Daniel and most of the other people that donate. Just a big thank you all the time. They're the ones that always usually donate on those streams and fund looking at this fun e-waste stuff. But without them, you wouldn't have seen this calculator. So thank you very much, everyone. Once again, I really do appreciate it. You've made it to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching this one. I really do appreciate it. And I hope you've enjoyed looking at this calculator with me. If you had to skip along throughout the video, that's completely understandable because this device was very unpredictable and I had no idea that I'd be going through two devices just to review it. But here we are. But I appreciate you nonetheless for tuning in and watching another installment in the iWish series. Feel free to let me know what you thought of this thing down below. If you think this is a worthy device or if you think it's a complete waste of money, I'd love to hear your thoughts and all that sort of stuff about this because as i said there's people out there a lot smarter than me that will probably know a lot more about this thing than i do it'll be interesting to hear what you folks have to say about this one also system files are in the description below so feel free to also go through them and if you have any findings let me know thank you so much for watching really do appreciate it and i think for the next video i'll be taking a look at the third phone i ever used the motorola l6 i don't just have one of them just in case one doesn't work, then I have backups, okay? But yeah, I really want to take a look at this because I've got quite a few stories for that one. As always, please take care, stay safe, be good people, and I'll see you all in the next one, which should be that or maybe something else. I'm not too sure. A bug just flew in my face. I don't know where he came from. He's not welcome here. Ah, until I see you next, keep being awesome, and thanks for listening to me ramble. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks guys for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.